here in Vegas once again. And tonight's main event is Pro Volleyball, the PVF featuring the Atlanta Vibe. Three matches in five days for the Vibe. They finish it off with a match at the Vegas Thrill here in Henderson and the Dollar Loan Center. Once again, so glad to have you with us, AJ Canell alongside Victoria Dennis. Vic, both of these teams, Atlanta and Vegas, coming off a win on the road against San Diego. They are, they're both feeling that momentum. Both of those wins were on the road. Now the thrill back in their home stadium and now hosting a team that they've yet to see. And we didn't see anything like Cat Bell's performance against San Diego last time out. A PVF record, 28 kills in a match. Cat usually used to playing on the right side, but now stepping into the left side attacker role. We can see her in the back row putting balls away for the thrill. She has been a go-to offensive threat and is just peaking here in the league. So Cat Bell, she knows how to put balls away. The player whose record she bested is on the other side tonight for Atlanta in Leah Edmond. Edmond voted second PVF player of the week this year. 27 kills in the season opener at Omaha. She is a go-to attacker for the Vibe, as we know, and the thrill. They need to find a way to stop the pins, the opposing pins, and she's a big threat out there on the left. All right, don't go anywhere. It's the thrill and the Vibe. The Vibe were the second picked team in the PVF preseason poll. Major ammunition on the opposing team coming in here to take on the Vegas thrill. Center. It's the Vegas Thrill and the Atlanta Vibe coming your way just a matter of minutes. Let's take a look at the visiting starting lineup for the Atlanta Vibe. Five and three record, second place right now in the PVF. On the outside, Lekator member Mene joining Leah Edmond out there. Member Mene taking the spot of Ali Linehan for tonight. Shelly Fanning and Magda. Yella Hashiva getting her first career start, the number two overall pick in the PVF. On the opposite side, it's Anna Lazariva. It's Tori Stringer. She likes to go by Stringer uh, in the starting lineup in place of Marley Montserrat at setter. And Morgan Hentz is the libero. There's a lot to get to there, a lot of changes with Atlanta. And featured player, player just making her fourth appearance. She, Arrived with the vibe a few weeks ago, Anna Lazariva out of Moscow, and she has been on a tear since she got to Atlanta. Five and a half kills per set, and not that far behind it in terms of digs per set. 
for the Vegas Thrill. It's Cat Bell, Gabby Gonzalez on the outside. Hannah Maddox coming back from illness is available tonight, but will not start. In the middle, it's Molly McCage still on short-term IR. So it's Lane Van Buskirk and Berkeley Oblak. Saskia Hippe the opposite. Alicia Glass Childress is the setter. Kylie Murr at libero. And Glass Childress is at 11 assists per set, coming off a huge match against San Diego, a five-setter. 57 assists, 14 digs. I mean, I think most coaches would agree that Glass Childress is the top setter in the PBF. Right, even if the team passes out a system or digs off the net, Glass Childress always finds a way to put her hitters in a scorable position. 11 assists per set. That is big time for Alicia Glass Childress, who's married to Josh Childress, of course. Uh, former longtime NBA player and was a star at Stanford. And Alicia won three national titles at Penn State University. The team won a fourth the year after she left. So that was the real heyday for Penn State when she was playing for the Nittany Lions back in the day. And she's got the mama strength. She does. She has three baby cubs at home and Definitely leans on that mama strength and her defense. She gets in the face of attackers when she's in the front row blocking. She knows how to stay, take space at the net, and then pivot, transition, and run that offense. Todd Dagenet, the Central Michigan alum, was the head coach at UCF for 15 seasons, went to the NCAA tournament six times for UCF, and that was before they were in the Big 12. Let's, uh, let's not forget. Fran Flory, former SEC Coach of the Year, was the LSU head coach for 24 years, winning us in program history. Went to nine NCAA tournaments, helped establish the LSU Beach Volleyball Program, and was the head coach for both teams from a period of 2014 through 2016. Couple of tweaks in the Vegas lineups, mostly due to mostly due to injuries, uh, and it's the keys to the match, Vic. First ball side out for the Atlanta vibe. They gotta be able to find that first ball side out as the throw are going to look to score in transition as well. All right, should be good to go here. Execute in transition, crucial for the thrill. There are so many transition opportunities in this league. They're gonna execute in system on the first part of the match, and Vic, it was Atlanta into the net there. Right, the thrill need to take advantage of those unforced errors that the Atlanta vibe are going to give them. It's a rare sight to see it on the first point, but this is where the thrill needs to take that opportunity and earn one to two points at the service line. Start with one of their middles, Berkeley Oblad as a server. And there you go. That's the matchup that Vegas has been hunting coming into this match. They want Cat Bell blocking Lazariva. Well, Bell did her scouting report, that's for sure. She got in front of that main attacker for the vibe and was able to take that space away with her left hand. Fran Flory said they're gonna seek that matchup. Oblad, the middle, pancakes it for the thrill. Back set, Lazariva shoves it. Dug by Oblad, so a great defensive point for the Vegas middle. Morgan Hentz digs Cat Bell. And right to the middle of the floor goes Lekator member Mene out of the University of Pittsburgh. Great read by her. She was able to identify the defense of the thrill. Dug in on her, she went. Her full approach, her full swing, double arm lift, and then just the last second was that hand-to-ball contact with the off speed. That pass was tight, and I wonder if that's part of the reason that Glass Childress tried to put it over. We didn't have the perfect angle to see just how tight it was, but uh, an error by Alicia Glass Childress. So even at two, and the server is the Atlanta middle, Shelly Fanning. Back row attack by Hippe. Back row attack, Leah Edmond. Expect a lot of that. Absolutely, it's her first year, fourth 
fifth year as a professional. Look at her here for this back row attack. She's contacting that ball about five feet. Even with two blockers up, she was able to see the block in front of her and hit around it. You're saying contact the ball at five feet, so she's contacting it halfway in between the 10-foot line and the net. Correct, exactly. As a back row attacker, you have to take off behind the 10-foot line. You can contact the ball in front and land in front of that 10-foot line. Some good serving by Fanning. Here's Cat Bell off the record 28 kills, most ever in a single match. In the PVF, she had five sets to work with, but extremely impressive what she did, breaking Leah Edmonds' mark that she set in the opener. Cat Bell did it at San Diego on Thursday. And clips the net down for an ace. A little love from that let serve there. Going to the thrill. Sometimes at top of the tape, it can be your best friend or worst enemy. And right now for Alicia, I'd say it's her best friend. It's her second ace of the season. I don't know if Bell needed to touch that one. They had the defense there, so it gives the vibe a chance. That was a miss hit from Magda Yella Hosheva, the all-time NCAA rally scoring era block leader, getting a look in the starting lineup for the first time today for Atlanta, commits an error. What forced that error, AJ, was Van Buskirk taking away her space, and she made her attacker hit around her, and with that, out of bounds. And it's a violation by Vegas there. As set is back row, it looked like she did contact that ball above the net when she put her hands up. There you go. Appreciate the explanation, back row setter. Cat Bell, cross court, Morgan Hentz digs it and put away on the over dig by Lane Van Busker. The thrill applying that service pressure and working in serve receive. Talking to Coach Fran Pryor, asked her what the keys of the game were. They were to extend the long rallies and earn in transition. We're gonna see that a little bit later. Cat Bell service there. Thrill have been serving it way better in recent matches. They had their three worst of serving efficiency matches in their first three matches of the season. Since then, they've been better. Serving is the only skill in volleyball that you have full control over in the present moment, right? You can't control the pass if you're a setter. You can't control the attack if you're a... You can't control the attack if you're... The setter, pardon me, I'm getting tongue tied Wait, here you, watching that block. Where oh are my we? goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> are you okay? I, am I okay? <laughs> pardon me, so sorry. Well, you know what's okay is the vibe ability to put pressure on the opposing team with the serve. And Lakator member Mene lines another one up with her team in front by two. Pipe goes slow, and that is shoved down by Leah Edmond. They've gotten Hippe a couple times in a row. Edmond identifying that attacker was dropping her elbow just a little bit. She delayed her block and was able to press over last second. Glass Childress to Gonzalez. Draw a little bit of attention there by Van Busker. Combination play, Gabby Gonzalez kills it. Gonzalez continuing to find her rhythm here for the thrill. She's come in off the bench. She's made starts for the thrill, but Gen Gonzalez has stayed steady, and where she stayed steady the most is in her serve receive. I'm interested to see Magda Yella Hasheva get a look uh, out of the Czech Republic. She was the number two overall pick by San Diego and was traded to Atlanta. And has, she's only played in six sets before this match. She's now the server. Oblad around the middle there. Stringer sets up Edmund. We know that the Vibe want to find Edmund out there on the pin, so it's about prioritizing who your opponents want to find, especially given a good pass opportunity. Nice set there from Tori Stringer. 
who's getting the starting nod in favor of Marley Monterey, who we are told is it's a bit of a load management situation there. Nothing that Monterey did wrong. She's still entrenched as the starter going forward, most likely. But part of it, too, is they wanted to get Stringer a look. They, they highly value what she brings to the table. And so in a busy stretch here, three matches in five days, they give Stringer the start. But Monterey could be seen in the double sub. Block touch there against Lazariva. Thrown down by Gonzalez, hence was waiting for it. We had to dive for it. Now Glass Childress sets back row attack. Cat Bell thumps it. Edmund goes soft, covered easily by Hippe. Gonzalez off the block and out. It feels like Gonzalez is at her best when she's playing off hands. And there you go, the thrill extending these rallies. How they're extending the rallies while well, they're playing defense. And they're able to control that ball on their side of the net and then find a way to earn in transition, swinging high hands. <laughs> Member Mene terminates and sides out for Atlanta. Expecting the ball to go to her for the majority of the set. She plays a heavy load for Atlanta. Couple in a row, big swings from the vibe. As on the previous play, I should say, it was Edmund on the previous point. My apologies there. But now a four point differential for Atlanta. Had to be a bump set there from Glass Childress. Second ball for Hentz. Lazariva dug Kylie Murr tight to the net, who touched it last. The call is that Alicia Glass Childress did, and she peers up toward the R1, Landry Homsher, who is joined by Devaney McClarty as our officiating crew today. It was the right move by her. It looked like she went to go and tool that block, but it was the vibe that was able to get that last contact. Not a good pass there from Bell. This time, though, Glass Childress wins the joust. As setters always do, they seem to be the best in the house at that. And Glass Childress, she's gotten many of reps as winning these jousts. Usually, if you're second to touch that ball, you're able to use that momentum to throw it back down. Edmund the pass. Lazariva was blocked back, just rolled over by Edmund. Here is Cat Bell, hammers it through the block. Bell in one rally, getting a block, and then playing defense again, transitioning and putting the ball away for the thrill. To say she's a seasoned veteran is an understatement. Coach Flory's saying that there just, there aren't many harder workers out there. People don't understand how much extra time Cat Bell puts in. Edmund has to reach for that one and it still works out in her favor. So this will take us to a timeout. Atlanta takes a 15 to 11 first set lead. We take a scheduled break here in Vegas. It's about winning the small battle. I know this would be a big battle to win for him and the Fury tonight. Asia O'Neal, Columbus, first time winner in their home debut. Welcome home, Columbus Fury.
thrilled down by four here at home early on against the Atlanta Vibe. These teams have the inverse records of each other. The Vibe five and three, the Thrill three and five. So still very early in the season, over half of the season left to go. Berkeley Oblad slide attempt, but a leaping play to keep it alive by member Mene. Oblad says, I'll just put it right back down in your face. Glass Childress being the quarterback there, spreading her offense with her middle blocker running behind her. She doesn't set her just once. She sets her twice in that rally, going back to her, identifying that she only had one blocker in front. Middle kill on the other side, Shelly Fanning. I'm going to go back to Oblad for a second to see her hitting assertively on the slide. That's crucial with Molly McCage still on short-term IR. Exactly, and Oblad stepping into that role. McCage, as we know, has been a standout athlete for the thrill, but Oblad has really filled those shoes. Great set there by Kylie Murr. So the cat bell swing forces the overdig. Now she tips member Mene. The five foot seven outside covers it. Back set, Hippe roofed. Yaha Rajava with a big time block. Watch her track this ball. It's a big crossover step, and she presses low over the top of that tape. D ball, Hippe rifles it, but long. Well, they say it. Uh, my eyes uh, deserted me there for a second. Wow. Okay. So I wasn't totally seeing things. That was really close to being out. It was pretty close. At bolt six coming in clutch there for the thrill. You know what happens when you assume as member Mene, she brings explosiveness as a 5'7 outside. Not the only 5'7 outside we've seen in this professional league, but look how she elevates. She's able to do that because she has such a great explosive step close with that double arm lift. Timeout call by the Vegas Thrill. The five up by five here in the first. season of the Pro Volleyball Federation. And we get started here tonight. Hannah Maddox from the 10-foot line. Hold on, that was powerful. Oh my goodness, over her back. Gillen again. Goodness, Jill Gillen is a spike specialist. Asia O'Neal. The big attack there and a block from Hannah Tatton. Nick Craven Cooper slams it home on the back line. And there's another step block. NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we are only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. Team 13 Atlanta vibe first set lead over the Vegas thrill in this first ever matchup between these two franchises two of the seven in the PVF the inaugural season Cat Bell not quite off to the same type of performance she was the other night I mean just unstoppable against San Diego with 28 kills first in league history hit 300 off to a two for 10 start is Bell. Hippe is long, was looking for contact, and Fran Flory at this point might as well challenge it, you'd think, down by seven. You get two challenges per set. They're just gonna, they're just gonna sub in Paulina Prieto Sorame. No challenge is called there on the play. Blast Childress. 
That's Prieto Sarame on her first point. Paulina comes in. She is a spark plug. Spark plug. Coach Fran touched on her presence in practice and how every time she steps into the gym, she's that spark plug. Yeah, they're looking for more consistency in general out of her. What they like what she can bring in as a substitute into an individual match. Free ball for the Vibe. Set the pipe for Leah Edmond, and the Vibe have taken this first set. A figurative ball and run away with it. And it's a touchdown lead for the Vibe. The Vibe doing a great job working in transition. They're firing away at the pins, and their middles are involved. Passing sub. Megan Jemison. Gonzalez tools it for the kill. Gonzalez always does a great job of identifying that block in front of her. A great amount of her kills come from tooling that block at a younger age. We think to shy away from it because we don't want to, well, get blocked. But at this level, you have to use the block to your advantage. I've noticed this a little bit, by the way, with a thrill. At times, they need to do a better job of putting away over digs and over passes, and it bites them right there on that point. And well, it's something that you usually practice at the lower levels, but you need to be able to execute it in real time here. For example, you want to be able to execute a free ball pass every single time passing to target. The same thing with scoring on those over pass kills. That should be a put away most of the time. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but anecdotally it hasn't always been there this year for the thrill. You add in another ace and it's an eight point difference. It's all vibe here in the opening set. High performance moment of the week brought to you by Ren Athletics. 14 12. Sydney Hilly. Maddox pulls the center off. Right side swing. We're done. That's for Las Vegas. Takes their inaugural match and starts at 1 and 0. Oh. Gear up with the official Pro Collection apparel today. Available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyballshop.com. The Atlanta Vibe have really controlled the second half of set one if they're going to break it down into compartments. And they're two points away from taking a 1 0 lead. Yella Hashiva digs one. But free ball for the thrill. Glass Childress Oblad. Yella Hashiva digs another. She had a smile on her face in the middle of that point. And that gets a piece of Lazariva. Gabby Gonzalez has come out looking pretty good today offensively for Vegas. She sure is. She's saying tag your it there down the line, just tagging the outside arm of the defender. And she did a great job of threading that needle, hitting that ball out in front of her shoulder. Service error puts Atlanta on set point. Gonzalez off to a five for eight start with no errors. Problem is, really no one else has it going right now for the thrill. Meanwhile, the Vibe are hitting 360 on set point. The serve by Stringer. Gonzalez smacks another. Member Mene digs. Right back to Gabby Gonzalez. Stringer, the diving dig. Another chance for the thrill to extend this set. Hence, hit the floor. Member Mene rolls it down. Fun 
finish there to the first set for the Vibe. They win it by nine, taking command late in that first set. Lekator, member Mede with the finishing blow. Leah Edmond had some big swings. Kat Bell had a couple, but it was the Vibe block and the Vibe arms that ruled the first set in the end. of the inaugural season of the Pro Volleyball Federation. As we get started here tonight. Hannah Maddox from the 10-foot line. Hold on, that was powerful. Oh, my goodness. Over her back. Gillen again. Goodness, Jill Gillen is a spike specialist. And he's your old deal. A big attack there and a block from Hannah Tatt. Reagan Cooper slams it home on the back line. And there's another stuff. Our day has dawned. A new horizon is upon us. Inspired by the many who came before us, together on a path to achieve something extraordinary. Do you hear the groundswell? We are at the forefront of a revolution. Empowered, inspired, together. We didn't get here alone. This is our responsibility. We are creating a new major league on the greatest stage volleyball has ever seen. Pro Volleyball Federation is real pro volleyball. Now is our time. Communities will come together. History will be made. We are one. Today, we are inspired. Today, the light shines on us. Today marks the beginning of the next chapter. And we're writing it together. Get rolling. All right, ahead with set two. Take a look at the numbers and look at the correlation, Vic, between the passing percentage, the perfect passing rate for both teams, and their hitting percentages. Well, you took the words literally right out of my mouth. Exactly. There's no need to say that when you're passing in system, you're also going to be able to execute at a higher percentage when you're attacking that volleyball. Right now, Atlanta hitting 355 in comparison to the throw at 135. And those unforced errors adding into the throw with five, Atlanta with two, one of those being the first point of the ball game, and then they're able to find their rhythm there in the middle part of that first set, but they're looking to carry it over here in the second. The thrill like to start with the setter as the server this time around, Alicia Glass Childress. Diving dig by Murr, and was there contact there? The answer is no. Call on the floor on the Cat Bell attempt. Fran Flory not waiting around this time to challenge. First point of the set gets challenged. Great up there by Murr. She was able to read that and then explode in her defensive step towards the ball. Of course, no one really ever waits around a challenge. You got to decide within seven seconds, but I sort of meant in the sense of early in the set. You get two challenges per set. If you win it, you keep it in both cases. 
So you could potentially get infinite challenges per set if you keep on winning them. Keep but. keep gambling. Win in Vegas. Yeah. And so we'll get a look whenever they start looking or get the definitive look in Frisco, Texas with Bolt 6. We're going to get the look for you as well. So don't worry, you'll in all likelihood see, see a great replay that'll tell a story here uh, with the 10 tracking cams and the 12 floor cams and uh, everyone's everyone's favorite, the Bolt 6 uh, shout out, giving it to you. So what can you challenge if you're curious? Block touch, net touch, attack line, service line, center line, and pancakes. And the challenge is actually on this play was not the block touch. It looks like they're challenging the... It doesn't make sense though, because that's Vegas. So... <laughs> They, Vegas won. Vegas, the point was decided in, on the last point. Why? It wouldn't make any sense to me why you'd be challenging your own floor touch that was ruled legal at the time. I feel like we saw the wrong look there. They have to be. You would have had to challenge that as it happened too. So, yeah, that's. It looks that's, like she was talking with the up ref, saying that she was challenging the block. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't challenge your own successful pancake. That, uh, they just, just wanted like, to reassure that that ball was up. Just wanted to give us another highlight of that pancake, I guess. Let's see if there was a block touch here. Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. If anything, challenges can help slow down the momentum if you needed a challenge call, even though it was the first point. Great pancake, though, <laughs> by Kylie Murr. Oh, was that? Are they going to say she carried that? I, I think they probably should have, if we're being honest. But Van Buskirk's going to take credit for the kill. From that angle, it looked like she was able to take that ball directly above her head, therefore not behind it and not called as a throw. Is that so? Is that the ruling there? Maybe I'm, I'm speaking. Uh, out of turn, and it just looked to me like she kind of threw it, but are you saying that it depends on where you take the ball from originally? Well, you know, she has a long arm, so it may look like <laughs> she's carrying that ball further, but if the ball was contacted in front of her shoulder, which uh -huh. in that replay we're able to see, that is not considered a throw. It can't be a throw in that case. Okay, noted. Great kill on the last point by Yella Hashiva. Another dig from Murr on the member Mene swing, and Gonzalez turns defense to offense. Gonzalez playing big time defense as well, not only off blocker, but in the back row. But look at how Glass Childress, she sets that ball on her knees out of system, and then Gonzalez able to fire that one away. Member Mene comes up short. That was close to tape level, but I think Vegas got a piece of it. Oblad closing that block, catching it on her right hand. A momentum play for the thrill. You always want to try and get that next serve in. Yeah, yeah, they've gotten a lot better with their serving in recent matches, but it has still been something that's plagued Vegas this year. Perfect pass there by Bell. Prieto Sarame took a swing. Now Gonzalez goes soft, kept up. In system chance. Bell from the back row, Morgan Hentz was ready. A third very clean opportunity here for the thrill. Prieto Sarame, Morgan Hentz right there and ready for it. Oblad off the block. Big chance now for the Vibe to win a rally. Block against Yelahashiva. Pancake Glass Childress, the point of the match easily. Yelahashiva blocked, up for a joust. Kept in play again. Murr digs Edmund. Gonzalez, was there contact? Yes. That was the play of the year thus far for the thrill and maybe the PVF. What an extended rally. We knew we were going to see them this game. Let's talk about 
Summer getting that last dig and Alicia getting that pancake, but it was Gonzalez on the pin being a worker horse, putting that ball away. Should they implement a rule that every 15 seconds a point goes by, the point is worth another point? Why not? That would have been worth probably four points. That's my new idea. Lazariva with the hatchet there to score right back at Vegas. That point worth somehow exactly the same as the <laughs> exactly, previous uh, dramatic exactly. point. See, you're coming around on it. You're I, coming around on it already. Okay. Doesn't seem right. Gonzalez, tools. Yeah, that was out of play. So another Gonzalez tool. And I would expect for the thrill to keep going point for point with the vibe here. Looks like they're able to find that rhythm, find the momentum. We know that the vibe, they're a well-oiled machine. They're going to earn points in transition. They're going to earn their first ball side outs. But how the thrill plays defense, extends those long rallies and be able to win one to two more points in those long rallies. Todd Dagenet had some words there for the referee, and here he is again having a conversation with the R1, Landry Hampshire, after the point. It's been two points in a row. He's had some words, and he's still barking. Surprised he didn't get at least warned. Interrupting play there, even though his team won that last point. Uh, Atlanta said no contact, but they were not believed. And Cat Bell puts it away. The throw able to cover that ball in transition and find Bell on the pin. Another fantastic out of system set for Glass Childress. And Bell is there to put it away. The beat just dropped for a second there. Got it. That was intense. Trying to get into a rhythm here in the second set. There's been some stoppages after a couple of these points. That's going to be a five side out as Oblad checks out. Now there's more conversation going on with Todd Dagenet. Man, you don't usually see in this sport very much interaction between the coaches and the officials. So really, any any bit of it is notable. Cat Bell with a laser. Bell firing away again. Thrill, giving them that one point lead here. It's an inside set for her, but she's able to get her feet to that ball and gets her hand on it inside the block of the vibe. Remember, Mene to the middle of the court. That's how she ended the first set. This is just pushed over by Prieto Sarame. Now, member Mene runs into one, finds Glass Childress. Here's Bell. Edmund the dig. Member Mene gets another swing. Murr, I think, got to that one. I was blocked off from it. Swatted over by Shelly Fanning. Prieto Sarame down the line. Well, that point for me is going to Cl Glass Childress. Looked like Cat Bell punched her in the face as they both went to that one <laughs> ball to keep it alive. Talk about resilient defense and gritty defense, but Paulina firing it down the line there for the thrill, earning that point. It's not a contact sport, but sometimes you get some accidental contact as Lazariva terminates again out of Moscow, Russia. She's hit 350 with five and a half kills, over four and a half digs in her first three matches since coming over. Well, she's so steady, a seasoned veteran. It's her 10th year as a professional athlete. She played in, Rus in Russia, France, and Turkey. And, and coming right from China, where she was the Super League Foreign Player of the Year and Best Opposite, she has been unbelievable. I don't throw that word around often because it's overused, but in her case, like you look at the numbers, you're not sure whether to believe them, and she's going to come through on this point as well as you see the replay. She is so even keel and she is a steady presence for the vibe. It's so important, especially in a game of momentum. You ride the highs, you find the lows, but not for her. She's just even keel. She knows her role. She knows her job and she executes. 
That was Paulina Prieto Sarande with a kill. It's interesting because if you ask Coach Fran Flory who the most consistent attacker is this year for Vegas, she will tell you Saskia Hippe. It has been two matches in a row, though, that Prieto Sarande has been in there replacing Hippe, who got lifted in the middle. As that's a kill threaded down by member Mene. The block not able to close it a little bit off the net, so she was able to squeak that one in there. And the serve by Lazareva forces a cat bell pass. It gets a bit out of control. The Vibe have taken a lead here in set two. The Vibe being able to find a string of points here. They found it with their blocking. They found it with their serving. They wanted to come into this ball game and apply that service pressure to try and work the offense of the thrill to get out of system right now. They're doing that. That's not fair to Gabby Gonzalez. That, that had nothing to do with her to get hit in the face like that after she caught one up high in the previous match as well. Back row attack down to the floor for Leah Edmund. Edmund active in the back row on this big attack. We can see her take off. There were three blockers up, but she was able to thread it through the seam of that block. What are your keys to being a great back row attacker? Because Edmund is definitely one of them. I think it's waiting on your second step, identifying the apex of that set, and then step closing to it. Hitting it big, it's pretty unique. You have the vision of the court in front of you, so you're flying into the ball, but you're still able to have that vision beyond the ball to see where you need to carve it up around the block. It was a four nothing run that was finally stopped, and now Vegas has a couple in a row. The thrill stopping that bleeding with Oblad in the middle, running that quick attack. Slide, Yella Hasheva in. She was outstanding, one of the underrated players in the country for Washington State. They don't get a lot of attention in Pullman, but she finished her career as the all-time rally scoring era blocks leader in NCAA history. And that comes with being a disciplined athlete. It is her eye work. It's being able to close the block, her footwork, and being able to execute it time and time again, it is very difficult to do. She put balls away there as well for the Cougars, and she gets a couple in a row for the Atlanta Vibe. The number two overall pick by San Diego was dealt for Allison Bastianelli and Kendra Dahlke. I'd say very good value. I don't know the ins and outs of the reasoning on that deal for both teams, but I think the Vibe Got away pretty good with that trade. And now another five block, Yella Hashiba involved in the double block. Here's where the thrill need to work at the service line. Can they apply that service pressure to work the Vibes offense? They keep this up, hence throws it over. And down the line and good for Gonzalez. To finish on Yelahashiva, the weird thing about it, didn't really get a straight answer from Atlanta why she's only played in six sets this year coming into the match. It's odd. Number two overall pick. Their middles really haven't been great. Um, and if anything, Karis Watson, who's getting a seat today, has been probably the better of their two middles as Atlanta is challenging block touch here to give you more time to expound on the uh, my point there that I'm kind of thrown at you. Yeah, well, I think it's about being able to find that setter hitter connection, especially in the middle when you guys are coming from different walks of life, different teams, different systems, and being able to find that gel. I mean, I'm not in their practice gym. I can't tell you what those reasons are, but just from an outsider's point of view, they're making those calls for a reason. And right now, for me, if I had to guess, it would have to be setter hitter connection. Okay. We didn't need all 22 Bolt 6 cameras for that call. That was uh, 
Definitely not a block touch. Coach Dagenet, I don't know if that was a frustration challenge or what, because he's had issues, as we've documented, with Landry Homsher in set two. And now there's some more uh, record keeping going on, maybe. There's a look at the scores table. There's a look at Coach Dagenet. And we're going to take a timeout here. I'm not sure why, but we're taking it. Our day has dawned. A new horizon is upon us. Inspired by the many who came before us, together on a path to achieve something extraordinary. Do you hear the groundswell? We are at the forefront of a revolution. Empowered, inspired, Together, we didn't get here alone. This is our responsibility. We are creating a new major league on the greatest stage volleyball has ever seen. Pro Volleyball Federation is real pro volleyball. Now is our time. Communities will come together. History will be made. We are one. Today, we are inspired. Today, the light shines on us. Today marks the beginning of the next chapter, and we're writing it together. Rally with us! So our original understanding was based on the replay we saw and the posted score that it was 14-13 off of a call that got upheld on the court. But now we are seeing that Atlanta won the challenge and it's 15-12, thus the timeout at 15 points. As far as why they won the challenge, I have no idea. We saw the replay there. There was no block touch. There must have been something else they were looking at. We tried to that. do some reconnaissance in that timeout, well, but we weren't out. able to find it. So, sorry. Maybe there's something obvious that we are missing. And if so, sorry. But it's 15-13. As Vegas is able to side out on the next point and get a Gonzalez serve. She's having one of her best matches so far all around. Kylie Murr, another impressive dig. Off of someone's shoulder there went Cat Bell. Oh man, flying in some deception on that point on the set to Lazariva and a kill for Atlanta. Thought they disguised where that set was going very well. Kicking it back and it looked like there might have also been a net violation as well. Okay. But it was a cool combo play with that sort of fake slide. And then it gets thrown to the back row D-ball attack. I did hear an early whistle there, I was wondering. So I'll believe you there. I didn't, I didn't see the actual signal that maybe it was a net call as well. Leah Edmond the kill. But going back to that play that you were talking about for the vibe, they were double loading the right side of the net. So they were spreading their offense with that slide attack on the right pin and then also that right back D ball as well. Yeah, it's, it, you usually in this sport, you want to spread the opposing team out. You see more in terms of disguising the play by throwing it in different directions. Impressive rally there ends with a cat bell kill but sometimes the overload also works right exactly but here taking a look at cat bell she hit up and over the block of the vibe and was able to score that point good pass by member mene bell digs it from the front row going for fanning again whistle early there this is the home stretch here in the latter half of the second set that the Thrill need to put their foot on the gas pedal. They got to hold the vibe here by playing disciplined defense and then finding ways to score in transition. Oh, 
Edmund pounds it through the block right down to the court. And this is crucial for a Vegas team that you go back and like they've had their success against San Diego, but they're on a five match losing streak against all teams not named San Diego. They're 2-0 and against the Mojo, 1-5 and against others. Yes, they're without Molly McCage again, and they haven't put Hannah Maddox into the lineup today either, who we are told is available, but still working her way back in. So very shorthanded again against one of the top teams in the league, but don't want to go down 2-0 here in what's been a close set. It's starting to slip away, but a service error makes it a three-point difference. It just takes one push here for the thrill to bring themselves back into this ball game. They've gone point for point. There's Maddox there on the screen. As we mentioned, she is ready to go if needed for the thrill. Net call there, clear. And the vibe, of course, I mean, they're doing some load management that they're going without. The player who's been their starting setter, Marley Montserrat. Allie Linehan's kind of been struggling, so if anything, they figure they might get a boost by putting Lekator member Mene in, although they still trust Linehan big picture. Here comes a serving sub, Casey Evans. She had a huge service run in their last match against San Diego. Both teams coming off a San Diego win. Atlanta's was more recently on Saturday. Stuff block there. As you see, another big block from Yelahashiva and a five-point margin, Vegas calls time. Perez told us it's about winning the small battle. I know this would be a big battle to win for him and the Fury tonight. Asia O'Neal, Columbus, first-time winner in their home debut. Welcome home. We talk about competitive composure, and this kid has it. Reagan Cooper having a night tonight for the Fury. We'd like you match that. Reagan Cooper slams it home on the back line. Fiber in control now. Once again, this was a close set until recent points. And we still have music going on. It's going to be a let point. It's going to be a let point. And they're going to redo it. And so we're going to have to see another Casey Evans jump serve. Three time All SEC performer for Georgia. She is a rookie from Ohio originally. That one didn't have as much mustard on it there. So the let point helped Vegas until Prieto Sarame was sent away. That is a tough block to get through. Right now, if I'm the thrill, I might want to send it back on the right side here, especially with those heavy blockers at, on the left side of the net. Tight pass there. Good salvage by Glass Childress, Evans digs it, Lazariva smoked one, answered by Gonzalez. Your iCloud storage is full. I mean, Atlanta is just putting up a wall. Timeout, Vegas, second set.
Hannah Maddox from the 10 foot glove. Hold on, that was powerful. Oh my goodness, over her back. Gillen again. Goodness, Jill Gillen is a spike specialist. Asia O'Neal. Big attack there and a block from Hannah Taft. It's Reagan Cooper, slams it home on the back line. And there's another stop block. NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we are only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. Well, to tie it all in, Atlanta outblocking Vegas big. Magda Yelahashiva making her starting debut has four of the Atlanta seven stuff blocks. Right, and that's a testament to her grit as a defender and her eye work. Defense is reading and reacting. That's exactly what she's doing. And it always helps, too, when you have a great serving game to make life difficult for the opposing team trying to stay in system. They do it there against Casey Evans, and Cat Bell finishes the job. This is not totally out of range. You have Cat Bell, who's a very good server. She's one of the best on the team. She's kind of an underrated all-around player, considering how much she does as just a pure attacker. I mean, her serving numbers, smaller sample size, have been good. Um, the passing needs to come along because she's not used to having to do it. She's normally an opposite. Uh, but she's digging the ball two and a half times per set. She's serving it well, and they need a serving run out of Cat Bell right here. Remember, Mene went into the sideline, and they have to blow it dead there because of the water bottle. That'll be a bad break for Vegas because that should be a let point. And she actually slipped on the water bottle. And maybe a piece of paper there as well. Fran Flory is saying, wait a second. This doesn't seem very fair. She didn't like it, which in this case, it's hard to blame her. I mean, you had a free ball coming over. And now you have to have a left point, but what do you do? You can't have a water bottle out there on the court. So there's, there's no choice by Devaney McClarty but to make that call. And then I think that's net there. Is that net on Vegas? So that's a rough, that's a rough break. Right, it's that call that it was a scramble play for the vibe and that call going against the thrill, it's about how are you going to react in those situations. You can only control what you can control. Unfortunately, that call did go against them. Here's Gonzalez. She fit that one down on the Atlanta side. It's about how you're able to string enough points here at the end of the second set to create that momentum heading into the third. Rare blocking error by Magda Yelohasheva. She'll make up for it on the slide. Magda Yelohasheva with her first extended look in the PVF. Seven for 10 first set with four stuff blocks. What a performance for the WSU Cougar alumna. The Atlanta Five have come into Vegas and taken the first two sets. Tonight. Asia O'Neal, Columbus. 
Bruce, first time winner in their home debut. Welcome home, Columbus Spirit. Had the long set break here between set two and set three. Moments ago, Victoria caught up with head coach for Atlanta, Todd Dagenet. Coach, you have seven blocks right now. How were you able to do that in the first two sets? I think our serving really is controlling what they can do. We're taking out some options. That allows us to, to double up or even triple up sometimes on the block. So as long as we're serving well, we got the blockers in the right spot, hands are in the right spot, taking away the low seams, we'll continue to have that kind of success. But it's all predicated on our serving. What are you looking to carry over into the third set? Yeah, I think we're playing pretty well. I want to make sure we keep the tempo up, make sure we're putting serving pressure on them. And, you know, we want to continue to establish the middles on the right side. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. AJ? For context, Vegas is passing at 10% as far as perfect passing rate, whereas Atlanta is converting 38% of their serves into perfect passes. 2-0 Atlanta after two. We're in the heart of the inaugural season of the Pro Volleyball Federation. We get started here tonight. Hannah Maddox from the 10-foot glove. Hold on, that was powerful. Oh, my goodness. Over her back. Gillen again! Goodness, Jill Gillen is a spike specialist. And he's going to A big attack there and a block from Hannah's hat. Reagan Cooper slams it home on the back line. And there's another stop block. Our day has dawned. A new horizon is upon us. Inspired by the many who came before us, together on a path to achieve something extraordinary. Do you hear the groundswell? We are at the forefront of a revolution. Empowered, inspired, together. We didn't get here alone. This is our responsibility. We are creating a new major league on the greatest stage volleyball has ever seen. Pro Volleyball Federation is real pro volleyball. Now is our time. Communities will come together. History will be made. We are one. Today, we are inspired. Today, the light shines on us. Today marks the beginning of the next chapter. And we're writing it together. Two zip, Atlanta in sets over Vegas. Welcome back here to Henderson in the Dollar Loan Center. AJ Canal, Victoria Dennis. Vic, you just heard from Todd Dagenet. He's so impressed with his team's ability to serve and get Vegas out of system and then put it away with the block. So what are you most impressed about? Right, well, applying that service pressure, it's one thing to talk about it. It's another to actually execute it. And the vibe, they're doing that right now. They're executing by hitting their serving targets. They're able to serve in the seam of the three 
drill and get them out of system. They've been doing that with, with major regularity here through the first two sets. It's been very impressive, and the disparity is, uh, is noteworthy once again when you look at the perfect passing differential, and, and that translates in a lot of ways, as we already said, to the hitting percentages. Now, let's, let's not discount either. Once the five have gotten their opportunities offensively, they've had a well-rounded attack, which is, for the most part, delivered. I think that the headline has been the passing and the blocking and the whole serve game, but, I mean, we've seen Leah Edmond and company, La Lazariva, really do their jobs as well. Right, and the thrill, they have to minimize their unforced errors, 11 errors. I mean, that's almost an entire half of a set there given in unforced errors, so you have to be able to reduce those. What's an unforced Forced air. It's hitting the ball out. It's touching the net. There should not be multiple net violations at this level of volleyball. So I think it's being able to lock in and do your job on defense, especially as a blocker. It is tough, though. You know, where do you go if your Alicia Glass Childress and Molly McCage and Hannah Maddox are out? And now against the number two team in the league, the Atlanta Vibe, the thriller down two sets to nothing. Going to the third. under the ball really is a big, big time move for her. And it's defense is heart and attitude, and you cannot coach that. And Kylie Murr, she has it. Great one on the other side as well. Morgan Hentz, the three-time NCAA champion for Stanford, the 2018 most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament. But with these, with these two liberos, uh, you, it's almost it's royalty at that position uh, and it's it's awesome to have them both in the building and and balling out it sure is especially in the libero position you can't score points but you keep your team alive kylie murr has the edge 12 to 8 in the digs category but hence's team has the advantage on the scoreboard 
Hannah Maddox gets her return to the Vegas lineup. We were told it was a possibility she would be coming in midway through this match, and she helps contribute to a first point win in set three. Has been a starter for most of the season and then might have fell under the weather and trying to get back to it and right now looking to be that spark plug on the left side. She didn't even make the trip to San Diego and a five set win that they were able to gut through without her and Molly McCage that was on Thursday. McCage remains on short term IR. Fran Flory told us that for her, they just had to shut her down. They still view it as a temporary issue but that she had to be shut down for now. No timetable quite yet that they could give us on the cage's potential return. She's on the all preseason PVF team. Maddox is stuffed on that occasion. Speaking of the pre, uh, preseason team, Atlanta is the only team in the league on that six member team that had two different players on the squad off of that Lazareva block. Leah Edmond and Morgan Hentz were both on the six member PVF preseason team. Just for some context there about the talent on this Atlanta side. Kat Bell to the floor there to keep the point alive. Della Hasheva, a rare swing in which she doesn't put it away. She was seven for 10 through the first two sets. Over by Lazareva. Opportunity here in system. Maddox, timing was off, didn't matter. She was able to find that on her way down and gracefully place it over that block of the bye. But let's take a look at the side of the thrill right now. They've made some changes on their offense. On the left side pin playing outside hitters, it's, it's Gonzalez and Maddox, and then they move Cat Bell back to the right side, back to her bread and butter. So Fran trying to find the flow and rhythm there. We see McCage right now on our screen, unfortunately on the injury reserve list. Hopefully we see her back sooner than later. Yeah, Bella's proven she can hit on either side. The issue for her when she's playing on the left is the passing. Lekator member Mene with the kill for the Atlanta Vibe. Mene, she's intense, she's fun. Her vertical is out of this gym. She has been that spark plug for the Vibe and she finds ways to score. Pittsburgh's been an up and coming program in recent years and she was a key part of it when she was there playing for the Pitt Panthers. Yella Hasheva. I don't she, think she's gonna be on the bench for too much longer after this one. No, absolutely not. She is a standout athlete, especially in the middle. She gets the job done. How she's able to do that is we saw it on the slide. She stays square with her shoulders when she's attacking it and she hit it flat at that block. Maddox, the hitting area, it's, you know what, because Vegas, a little more space in between their matches lately, and Maddox was out for the last one. Might take her a few approaches to get in rhythm. You would expect. Well, they're, uh, the wind gusts that have been around here in Vegas in recent days, I don't think affected that serve, but it looked like it there for a second as that was way long. Maybe a tailwind there for Lazareva. Jump serve by Maddox. Back to the slide, Yella Hasheva just wide. That was good defense from the thrill to really force that out of bounds. We saw Glass Childress step inside to cover that donut area and she was able to play a little bit of dodgeball as that one sailed out. Edmund tries to tip back low and has a hitting error. Interesting, interesting selection from her in her tool belt as an offensive threat. Maybe she saw that pocket open. You're a very optimistic and positive person. <laughs> You're, the, the word interesting, I feel like, could have, others would have been <laughs> more strongly worded with your word choice there. You know, positive vibes, why not? Well, that's the vibe. <laughs> there There's, you go. <laughs> you use the right word whether you knew it or not. Pancake Lazareva. Here's Bell, shoves it off the block and down. And there was a collision there. Oh, you just never want to see this. 
Leah Edmond and Morgan Hens, two of the best players in the PVF, and those two all preseason teamers we were talking about. They try to cover that tip, and it looks like they're both going to stay in there. Those are never fun when you collide there on defense. Looks like she might have gotten hit in her shoulder, but she's able to uh, shake it off nonetheless. One of those great back sets from Alicia Glass Childress. She's got to touch this first ball. Van Buskirk, well done, bump set to Bell. Scooped up by Glass Childress legally. Rattled around there, that's okay. And another net violation. We've seen a bunch of those, you touched on it for Vegas. It was, I was curious as well, was this actually in? It, the ball. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it was gonna be out if not for that net call. Uh, it was pretty obvious maybe to you watching. We don't have always the best look on those here at floor level as Maddox scrambles to save that. Lazariva smashed down right into our face off of Maddox. There is no delay in her arm, arm swing, especially in the back row. Look, as soon as she jumps, she unloads on that ball. We can see her arm in the air. There's no delay, and then she finishes that swing hard cross body. Maybe a little over ambitious there from Glass Childress on that set attempt, and we've seen the vibe inch ahead again. Danger zone right now for the thrill, already down two sets to love. It looked like she was trying to force that middle attack. I'm all for forcing the middle. Maybe she'll find it again. I thought I saw the net move again there on the vibe side. Doesn't matter. They tried their best. They couldn't get it over. Uh, yeah, something, uh, speaking of Glass Childress, that Fran Forey was talking about was, I mean, look, for her, she's a veteran. They, they think she's the best that there is, but in this heavy stretch of matches, nine and 27 days to start the season for Vegas, it's been as tough on her, who's been out there nearly every single point as anybody, and you know, perhaps as of right now, maybe you lose a half step or so, but as the schedule spaces out some more, she'll continue to get better and better. Right, running a marathon, it's hard when you're a setter, and talking with Coach Fran right now. They're working to get those passes and those defensive digs more in system. Right now, they've been a little bit of out of system, so that's why Glass Childress is taking those couple of extra steps there in transition as well. Yeah. But with that being said, she's able to take those two steps, maybe two and a half steps, and she's still able to make it work. Saw the Leah Edmond kill. Yeah, they want to try and make life as easy on her as possible, not always be leaning on her to just run the offense. You know, give her some, some easier sets than that one, for instance, even though she did well with it. Shove down Lazariva, the 10th year pro from Russia. Able to identify that that ball was inside here with that bump set. She saw that she had no inside blocker. Was able to just throw it low and inside that seam. Lazariva with a six kill, eight dig effort so far today. She has had at least a 330 hitting percentage, 15 plus kills, and 14 plus digs in every match she has played so far. And those are quite some numbers to see, especially this is the third game in only five days for the vibe. So, I mean, we said it again, she's a 10 year veteran. She knows what to do. She does her job well, and she's gonna execute for the vibe. I mean, we asked our coaching staff about that coming in. They said, you know what? We felt energized today coming into this match. We don't even care that it's a third match in five days. They had an energized vibe, pun intended, at serving pass. Oblad with an energized kill right there on the slide. Oblad hanging and banging on that slide attack down the line. Look at her take off that one foot and then it's contacted on her right shoulder. She finishes her middle finger up and over that ball, driving it down the line. Lazariva the answer. 
She had a little bit of a quieter start, but just physically so gifted. We were told by their coaching staff that she is extremely smart, reads the block extremely well. Tough serve. And nothing that Glass Childress could do in that joust situation. So it's interesting here. This might normally be a timeout on this point, but it makes sense. Fran's not going to do it because you get the auto timeout at 15. There you go, you win the point. And so if the Vibe score again, it'll be a timeout anyway. Cat Bell rotating now back into the front row for the thrill. They have Gonzalez on the big attack as well. Push to member Mede, Cat Bell says no. Go ahead, Cat Bell, on the right side where she feels comfy at home. Diving into that seam, hard cross. She, that was a no look block right there from Cat Bell. No contact, ball called out. Is, is how, how common or uncommon is that? If you saw that replay from Cat Bell, by the way, she, she was like looking intensely down to the court as she was extending her arms. Right, well, she was double pressing for lack of a better words, back into the court. She stopped inside, she jumped inside, and then pressed. Man, so it was 14-10. It probably would have been a thrill timeout if not for the 15-point timeout coming up. And the thrill might be the team to send it to 15. Four in a row. Nope, Yelahashiva says, I got it. But Vegas got themselves right back in the match behind the service game from Glass Childress. It's a one-point third set. performance moment of the week brought to you by Ren Athletics 14-12 Sydney Hilly Maddox pulls the setter off right side swing we're done that's for Las Vegas takes their inaugural match and starts at 1 and 0 oh. gear up with the official pro collection apparel today available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyballshop.com Underrated sports fan bases already in the country. Uh, a lot of teams are flocking to Vegas, and for good reason. You don't understand how great these fans are until you get here. Anna Lazareva serves it. Cat Bell hitting outside in this serve receive rotation. Here she is again, hits the block, goes down in the thrill, uh, the vibe side, but salvaged there by Stringer. Covered by Glass Childress on the tip. Maddox rolls it, it's right back in your face, says Yelahashiva and member Mene. A follow-up, by the way, in our previous discussion, another reason why you see blockers maybe tilt their heads down. I'll let you tell me. <laughs> Ray, well, when you have a vertical and you're standing well above 6263, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. You're diving inside with all your force. Catbell put her head down. I would think exactly why I would put my head down standing at 6-3 is because I don't get, want to get rocked in the face when I'm blocking one-on-one. -on -one. You don't? No, it's not fun. Lazariva lifted up by Glass Childress. 
Back row, tip. Cat Bell was there, but not a great touch. Slide, Yelahashiva. Second ball there with Murr going into the first row almost, and they win the point anyway. There's another extended rally for the thrill that they played relentless defense, and they were able to find a way to score. Gonzalez, that's her bread and butter, is out of system. Gonzalez knows how to find that block and use it to her advantage. Effective jump serve from Hannah Maddox out of South Alabama. She played her college ball. Back to Gonzalez. How this has been more, her day. Right. How many more digs do you need Kylie Murray to get? I mean, she lifted that one up perfectly controlled. Glass Childress could go anywhere there on that set. That transition game from Murr to Gonzalez is hitting 14 for 27 with an error, bringing her just under 500 as a hitter. And man, this, again, it was 14-10. Since then, 8-2, the run extended for the thrill. And we're gonna see a sub come in. It's Grace Cleveland, the rookie opposite out of Purdue. And actually, they're going double sub here. They're gonna put in Marley Monterey, played both at Florida and then Beach at UCLA in their normal starting setter, getting a load management day today, but not surprised to see her in there in the double sub. Member Mene tips down on the vibe side. Pushed over on three, and Cat Bell tripped over Glass Childress to end the run. I'm happy she wasn't injured there during that play. A little bit of a traffic jam, which happens even at this level. Like a tour member, Mene had service. Now Bell wants to make up for it, does. And she does with a smile on her face. She identified the defense was dug in on her. She still had that double arm lift, that high elbow. It's just that last second, that hand-to-ball contact, she slowed down. Really disguised that well. You could see it there on that replay from our great crew here in Henderson. Berkeley Oblad misses on the swing. And we're in a close one right now. Down to it if the vibe can retake the advantage and win the third set, it'll be match over. Thrill of other ideas. Thrown down, everything Gonzalez is doing is turning into gold. That's her 15th kill. She's finding ways to score, and right now she's doing that by mixing up her shot. This shot specifically, she was able to make contact, reaching up for that ball, and then throwing it between that seam of the block of the vibe. Second round pick out of Oregon, Gabby Gonzalez. Oblad up there against Fanning. Edmund blocked into the net there. Into the net. Well, Grace Cleveland, the recent sub. It's a three-point differential, and Atlanta calls timeout. Wow, Gabby Gonzalez has been great this year as a passer. Got off to a bit of a slow start to the season as a hitter. Not today for Vegas. Our day has dawned. A new horizon is upon us. Inspired by the many who came before us, together on a path to achieve something extraordinary. Do you hear the groundswell? We are at the forefront of a revolution. Empowered, inspired, together. We didn't get here alone. This is our responsibility. We are creating a new major league on the greatest stage volleyball has ever seen. Pro Volleyball Federation is real pro volleyball. Now is our time. Communities will come together. History will be made. We are one. Today, we are inspired. Today, the light shines on us. Today marks the beginning of the next chapter. And we're writing it together.
Okay, back here, late third set. What have you seen differently from Vegas to take an advantage here in the third? They're putting balls away. They minimize their unforced errors and they're putting balls away. They're doing it in serve receive and in transition. On top of that, Murr is digging volleyball. She was doing it before, but the difference is she's digging volleyballs, but now her teammates are able to put those away. And when you're out there so much as a libero, it helps to be a good passer as well. And Murr has a 71% positive pass rate. I mean, I think from what I've seen in this league, anything 50 plus is really good. She's at 71 tonight as a passer. So Murr has been outstanding. Leah Edmond sides out off of the Atlanta timeout. Gonzalez hits high hands, controlled by the block touch. Cat Bell digs Lazariva. It's a kill by Shelly Fanning, the fifth year pro out of Baylor. In a key moment, they don't set her often, but she delivers. So that's two earned points for the vibe. This is where the thrill needs to stop the bleeding. They got to work for a first ball side out. They have Bell on the D ball and Maddox in the back row as well. This is a huge point. That net touch probably helps the pass there for Maddox. Oblad tried to put away on the slide. Instead, Lazariva with the kill. Big point for the Vibe, three straight off of Todd Dagenet's timeout, forcing a Fran Flory timeout on the other side. It is all even at 21, third set, back with you in a sec. season of the Pro Volleyball Federation. We get started here tonight. Hannah Maddox from the 10-foot glove. Hold on, that was powerful. Oh my goodness, over her back. Gillen again. Goodness, Jill Gillen is a spike specialist. Asia O'Neal. The big attack there and a block from Hannah Tatt. Makes Reagan Cooper slams it home on the back line. And there's another step block. NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we are only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. Fran Flory used the timeout after Atlanta scored three straight. She has put Megan Jemison in as a serve receive sub, uh, receive sub for Cat Bell. The stringer serve, they target Jemison. Kylie Murr lays out to continue the point. And Edmund finishes the point. Four in a row for Atlanta. The thrill looking to stop the pins here on defense. We knew it was going to be one of the keys to their game. They got to find a way to defend the pins. Got to have this point if you are Vegas. Right back to Jemison. Handles it that time. Gonzalez, no shot. It wasn't a great pass. And they're going to redo it. Jemison back out. Bell back in after she went 0 for 2, really. I mean, I said handled it, but <laughs> it made it possible for Glass Childers, but not easy enough. So Bell comes back in. She's not going to be in this serve receive. It's pretty clear what's plaguing Vegas right now. 
This time, Obrad puts away the overpass or overdig, and they needed that. Finally, siding out after all sorts of serve receive issues. They did. They got to stop that bleeding, and they're able to use that overpass and unforced error to their advantage. Here's where they need to push at the service line. Got to win on your serve now. Edmund, block, and in! That was questionable with some side spin, how that was coming down. It came down clearly in the court. It's a tie at 23. Glass Childress, a big time blocker, playing right front defense. We love it when a, a setter can play defense. Block touch controls it. This is hittable for Maddox. Block covered, not quite well enough. Match point Atlanta. Vegas has one timeout left. Vegas will use it. A close block on Maddox. Tough to get it through there, but we'll see what Glass Childress does after this timeout. And in fairness, as Hannah Maddox right now having a one-on-one -on -one conversation off to the side with head coach Fran Flory, in fairness to her, she was out the entire last match. She just comes in for the first time in the third set here today, really trying to kind of get herself in a rhythm on a very high leverage point. Right, and big time players make big time plays in big time situations. For me, I think Maddox can handle that role. It's tough for anybody who is out sick and then comes back and has to do their job. I mean, you would say that if you work anywhere else, even not in athletics, but now that her job is a part of being an athlete. I mean, yeah, you have to adapt and you're not gonna feel 100%. And this isn't her first time, I'm sure, in her career since she started playing, who knows, in middle school that she hasn't felt 100%. And at this level, you usually don't feel 100% because your body's been worn and torn throughout the last, I don't know, decade of playing this sport. So she's used to it. She'll be able to come out of this timeout and find her team a side out. The Atlanta Vibe block has been huge today. Ten stuffs in the three sets. That is out on match point. It is Deuce in the third after Edmund can't keep it in play. On the stat sheet, I think we need to call him for coaches calling a timeout and then earning that point. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing that will bug you if you're Todd Dagenet on the other side is to have a missed serve coming off a timeout there with a match point. But Fran Flora uses it and earns Deuce. Well, first team to take a two-point edge will win this set. Atlanta calls timeout. There are now no timeouts left. And what's your strategy here for, for the home Vegas thrill? I mean, you want so badly to find a way back into this match, treat the fans here to something special, and now have a chance at Deuce in the third. Right now, I think they just need to play disciplined defense. They can't guess on defense. They got to be able to read. If you're able to take away that hard cross on the pins, make them hit line, maybe make that adjustment. Uh, who knows what coach is going to say? Maybe they're going to say take the line and funnel everything to Murr there and left back, which is also a good call. So we'll see which call they're going to make here out of this timeout. see potentially if there's going to be a serving sub or what Coach Fran elects to do because it's Berkeley Oblad right now, a middle that's on the floor as one of the servers. And yeah, I'll take, I'll, I'll say I call that one a little bit. It seemed to be an obvious situation for a serving sub. And Kenneth Sauer is coming in for Oblad. All tied at 24 in the third. Gonzalez, perfect dig. Here's Maddox, blocked. Covered Glass Childress, back to Maddox, slows it up, gives the vibe a chance. Lazariva, can't be denied. And a second match point coming for the vibe. Great attack down the line there. We can see her big step close on that ball. She was able to identify that seam on the outside of that block and go thumbs down on the attack. He's got nine kills and nine digs. 
Kamaili Hiapo with the serve on the second match point, serving sub for Atlanta. Maddox with authority, block touch, got it. Push back, Lazariva, it's in play. Excellent set by Stringer on match point, and Atlanta takes it in three. I would expect them to go back to her here. She's had herself such a great game. Mixing up that speed on her attack. It was a power swing down the line and then for game point, an off block tip. What do you say? I mean, that's another thing for Vegas in terms of they've had a lot of opportunities in close sets. Go back to the double losses to Columbus, the home and home. Both teams, uh, nobody, no losing team in any of those seven sets was held to less than 20. So it was close sets like crazy against Columbus, and you, you win one on the road against San Diego, but Vegas had their chances in the third set, could not bring it home against Atlanta. The vibe coming to town, and they sweep through the Vegas thrill. It's the high performance moment of the week. Brought to you by Ren Athletics. 14 12. Sydney Hilly. Maddox pulls the center off. Right side swing. We're done. Next point, Las Vegas. Takes their inaugural match and starts at 1 and 0. Oh. Gear up with the official Pro Collection apparel today. Available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyballshop.com. Welcome back here to Vegas as it's the Atlanta vibe with a three set sweep over the Vegas thrill. We're so glad to be joined now by Magda Yelahashova, the rookie number two overall pick that got traded to Atlanta. Get your first ever extended look yeah. here as a member of the vibe. And you were huge today with a 10 kill four stuff block performance hitting over 500. What was clicking for you and your team today? Yeah, I mean, uh, we wanted to come out really hard. You know, we lost a few games recently so we just knew that we want to be ourselves because we can be so much better than we've been showing in the past few games so I'm really glad that we've got both sweeps on this trip both in San Diego and today you are such an efficient and disciplined blocker <laughs> what's one piece of advice for somebody watching that you would give them as a middle blocker yeah I would just say like taking a lot of feedback like we have an amazing position group like Shelly Reagan and Carries they're all awesome they're helping me so much like give me feedback you know if I'm reaching out or not and then I try to focus a lot on my eye work and just like find a read setter so I'm a little bit ahead you know so it's been working well <laughs> I'm curious as a, as a final question and what made you want to commit to playing in the PVF? You had such an amazing college career, the all-time total blocks leader, rally scoring in the NCAA. You obviously, you're not from here, from the Czech Republic, yeah. so, you know, what made you want to stay in the States and, and play here? Yeah, uh, well, I would say I, j I was just so excited that there's actually a league starting this year, and it worked out perfectly with uh, me finishing at Washington State. So I was just really excited to try, and when I got a call from Atlanta that they, are, uh, that they want me on their team, I was 
very excited, you know, trying East Coast and everything, and the league's been so much fun. I'm very glad that I decided to stay. We're glad to have you here. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Big Thank you, performance guys. from Magda Yelahashova. Did I say that right? Am I that saying awesome. it right? Okay. Yeah. There you Close go. Enough, nice, least. AJ. Great job. Okay. As we want to thank uh, our sponsors for uh, putting this broadcast together. Thank you to everyone who helped make this happen. Uh, and a big day today for the Atlanta vibe on the road. We know the thrill. We'll be back at it soon. Vegas is next in action at Atlanta. These teams actually both of their next matches is going to be against each other. That'll be on Saturday, March 9th, 4 o'clock Pacific start time, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, technically from Duluth, Georgia. But, you know, the Atlanta vibe uh, is sort of similar to similar to what it's like here, you know, playing in the Atlanta area. So we're looking forward to that one, a rematch on Saturday night between Atlanta and Vegas. For Joe Kruger, our producer, and our entire talented crew here in Henderson, and my analyst, Victoria Dennis, I'm AJ Cannell, saying so long from the Dollar Loan Center. Vegas made it interesting in the third set, but it wound up being a three-set sweep for the Atlanta vibe over the Vegas thrill. We will talk to you very soon.